How's it going everyone? Welcome to the final weekly roundup of season two. Um, this man, we have a lot to talk about with this match here. It was an incredible final, it was an incredible championship match. Just, I mean, what a way to end the season. Uh, but I am your host, Lonely Hermit, of course, as per usual. Not next season though, we'll talk about that later. Um, and I'm joined finally by, we, we love you belly, we do. But I am joined by it's really to me be in the flesh. How are we doing today, my friend? Sup, sup, lonely hermit man. It feels good to be back. I went on a couple of vacations, so unfortunately missed the playoff roundups, but still caught all of the action. And boy, what a championship match! It feels good to be back in here. Woo. And we love to have you back, good sir. Uh, and of course, everyone's links will be down below. My links, Timmy's links, and all the coaches are all down below. Go check them out. Go support them. Uh, not everyone is returning. I'm not going to reveal who because I'm not sure if they've made their announcements uh, just yet. Uh, I am one of them, but <laughs> I'll say that. I'll go ahead and throw it out there. Uh, but there are other coaches who have who have uh, who are not returning next season. But you should still absolutely go support them. Everyone in the league are they're all fantastic people, fantastic content creators and all that good stuff um so yeah go support everyone in the co in the, the comments in the description down below and do all that good stuff um but before before we get into this timmy i want to hear uh i want to hear your thoughts okay i want to hear your thoughts on just just the season as a whole how did you feel you know we're here we're finally it's over we're done uh how did you feel about the season as a whole like what was just your kind of overarching thoughts about it yeah, no, it, it, first of all, it feels great uh, to get involved with the season, watching season one, only being a viewer and then being asked to do the roundup with you. It's been quite an honor and I'm very excited to continue uh, with the roundups and we'll, we'll talk about, the, I guess, the future of the EBL for season three and beyond, but it's been such an honor. It was such a great season and again, it kind of went as I expected. I believe in the first roundup I said it's probably going to be Guanaco versus Always More Videos, the, the Kentucky Kinglers versus Miami Dragon Knights, that played out. Pleasantly surprised though, and uh, truly even though we had two amazing guys in this championship game, really this whole season, anybody could have won. And, and we saw mm -hmm. that there were mm -hmm. a couple of upsets, really everybody was pretty even. Everybody had a, I, I don't wanna say a bad loss, but everybody had a loss that we didn't expect. Everybody had a win that we didn't expect. So it's been great, man, uh, definitely excited. and. Uh, although I will not be joining in, in season three as a participant, well, maybe maybe season four is uh, my time to shine. Ooh, oh, I'm excited to see that. Um, so for me, I mean, like Timmy said, this is just a very wild season compared to last season. I feel like last season it was a little more predictable uh, until the end. I think the Atlanta Bravery were really the only team last season that that pulled off some upsets and some different wins. Uh, that we weren't expecting whereas this season i mean it was i mean we know it was incredibly hard to predict it was just very up and down like timmy said there were a lot of upsets a lot mm -hmm. of uh i mean both the the undefeated teams got beat by the you know the lowest uh teams in their division well in you know from the mega division um so it was it was just a lot of back and forth um throughout i will say that i do think kentucky and miami were ahead of the pack mm -hmm. for the most part Although some teams I feel like did get hotter at certain points. Um, I would say Kentucky was more consistent than Miami. That's what made this final very interesting. I feel like Kentucky was a bit more consistent with their wins. Um, and whereas Miami stumbled here and there and really struggled mid season. Um, but at the same time, I mean, both teams just performed exceptionally well. And like you said, I feel like everyone in the league kind of saw this final coming uh this this really wasn't a shock that it was miami versus kentucky uh, it was just you know we we all saw it coming from the beginning uh, everyone was saying miami kentucky everyone was was this th these two were the favorites and it made sense that they made it all the way to the final um so speaking of the final we've danced around it let's get into it we have the miami dragonites versus the kentucky kinglers as the championship match here uh the miami dragonites walked away with one of the best six five wins i've seen Ooh. in the ebl so far if not the best uh this was just such a fantastic match such a back and forth match um i will say it gave me the vibes of when i played landon when owen uh I, la played iowa um that match was also incredible just to be part of it and watching it back because that came down to a last minute you know move last minute moves that we weren't expecting and all that good stuff um this one this one is interesting because i feel like there's some a couple of changes that maybe miami miami uh not miami kentucky could have done that could have shifted the tide a bit um 
but first turn i mean miami just laid it on the table they dynamax lock and rock yeah. first turn uh Miami sent, I mean, sorry, Kentucky. I keep getting them mixed up for some reason. Kentucky sent <laughs> well, they're right out next Salamence. to each other on the map, so that makes sense. True, yeah, true. Uh, Salamence, Salamence was first up for Kentucky, uh, which we've seen that multiple times throughout the season. Salamence has been kind of Derek's feeler Pokemon. Um, kind of gets to see what's what's uh, the other team's bringing. But uh, I feel like maybe maybe the better play would have been to save Salamence. It's hard, though, because who are you going to bring in to take a hit from a Dynamax Lycanroc? Um, then again, Derek probably wasn't expecting a Dynamax. I really don't think he was, judging by his reaction. Um, and of course, Lycanroc one-shot Salamence. Salamence isn't exactly the most bulky mm -hmm. Pokemon. Um, and it outspeeds. Lycanroc is also a fast Pokemon, so that wasn't too much of a shock. Um, I also know that Gunako prioritizes speed. He loves fast Pokemon, so not 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 really you know out there that Lycanroc could outspeed Salamence. But that was a big play right away, and that that, was, that kind of brought up a question of like, does he does Derek switch Salamence or does Derek? even should Derek have even brought Salamence maybe he should have brought Mimikyu maybe he should have brought something else was Salamence the best choice uh it's hard to say hindsight's obviously 2020 um it dies first turn so you know hindsight maybe says bring someone else um what do you think Timmy do you think maybe he should have replaced Salamence with something else I mean it's so tough to say I mean Salamence is just such a great Pokemon overall certainly there are other better you know dragons and, and dra dragon flying types so I don't think he was in the wrong for bringing it I mean it came almost every week if Salamence was on my team I'd probably be bringing it almost every week as as well keeping it in though that was a little uh, interesting I, I thought seeing mm -hmm. the Lycanroc just knowing that it is weak to, to rock, you know, switching for something else. So I don't think it necessarily was a mistake. And, and again, hindsight's 2020. You could argue both ways. Even beforehand, you can argue both ways. And that was the decision that Derek had made. And hey, it, it almost worked out eventually. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but then uh, Dialga does come in to try and deal with the uh, Lycanroc. Obviously, it's Dynamax. So Derek, uh, his automatic I, I know this from seeing him play and all his automatic instinct uh, against the dynamax pokemon is to bring in someone else to dynamax as right. well uh which is fair i mean that's not a it's not a bad play or anything like that so he brings in dialga dynamax is uh, gets a couple max steel spikes off to raise his defense um he's just you know building some stats uh and he managed to take that lichen rock it was kind of big that lichen rock took one hit um and it, it forced dialga to go to another turn of dynamax um on just the lichen rock because who knows if he one shots the Lycan Rock, you know, who does who does Gunako bring in uh, to take a hit from a Dynamax Dialga? Yeah. Nothing really wants to take a hit from a Dynamax Dialga. Uh, Dialga has been Derek's best Pokemon this season, which was something that kind of came as a shock. But although, like, hindsight, I really i am not too surprised that Dialga was his best Pokemon. Um, but I don't think many people would have predicted that. Um, but so Dialga takes down Lycan Rock. It's on his last turn of Dynamax, and then it gets stalled out. Um, and then Gunako brings out <laughs> brings out Whimsicott. We saw this earlier in the season. We saw Gunako do this earlier in the season. Uh, he brings out Whimsicott and immediately mementos and lets the Whimsicott go down. Um, and that was big. That was big. It might seem weird to people who who are all out and would rather just attack. Um, but Whimsicott pretty much forced Dialga to switch out and get rid of all those stat changes um, which was big because Dialga was becoming a problem uh, and, and Dialga is just a really tough Pokemon in general to take down so when it gets stat boosts it is it is a, a, it's a scary Pokemon <laughs> a very very scary Pokemon uh, when you saw that play to me what, what went through your head uh, it, it was it, it was a, a play that that was needed to do and mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to lowering the stats and, and using a, a move like like uh, memento kind of like uh, Harry Potter like you know memento you know <laughs> yeah. um, you know once you you know a lot of us we do like Nuzlocke runs and everything like that and, and just playing Pokemon every time you see that move you're like why is this a move and it's like that's exactly why that this is a move you know to lower those stats to take the power away from dialga and uh yeah it, it was interesting that a move like that was made in the championship uh match but hey whatever it takes to win and mm -hmm. you know that that's kind of what happened yeah and you know like we said dialga is just a problem so yeah. to, to <laughs> be able to neutralize it and get it out that's big you know that's big that's that's a huge play in and of itself um, later on though we got to see dog did, it did return um it one shot the inteleon i believe or Ooh. something close to that 
um it's been a couple days since i watched it so uh, my memory might not be the best um but it did eventually come back into kill the Inteleon, and then weavile came in to finish off dialga um because dialga was pretty low by that point um and at this point after dialga went down it's actually 3-3 three, three. Yeah. so we're tied we're tied at this point and it's already felt like the match was i believe if i remember correctly around 13 or 15 minutes long somewhere in that yeah. range quick, quick um, battle. yeah and by this point i i was i it felt like forever weirdly enough because it's not so much that they were taking forever it's just there was so much back and forth so much movement going on that it was hard to try and gauge like who really has the advantage here uh and we really weren't sure how the battle was going to end until literally the last turn um because it was just so back and forth and each each guy each coach was just making play after play that was just working out going their way um and eventually it does come down to uh zashin only for miami whereas uh kentucky had i believe it was prim Marina and uh glaring slow king left mm -hmm. uh so at this point it's 5-4 miami backs against the wall this is it this isn't the first time throughout the season that they've been there um and this is where another interesting play comes in from kentucky so prim is out on zashin and it baby doll eyes right away. It gets rid of the intrepid sword boost, uh, which is very smart from Derek. It moves first automatically. You know, you get it back to neutral. Very smart move. Um, but Derek tries to go for the scald uh, on the next turn. Now, if that burns, we'd be talking about a very different play here because that Zashin would be dead. That Zashin would be gone. There's no chance it would have yeah. been able to kill Sloking, uh, and Sloking would have won the match for the Kentucky Kinglers, but it didn't burn. And so that brings up the question, should Derek have maybe baby dollized again and a Zashin at minus one, maybe, maybe doesn't two shot the Galarian Sloking on the next turn, because that's what ended up happening. The Skull obviously doesn't burn. It only does about 15% maybe on Zashin. Uh, and then Zashin's able to kill. It actually one shot the Primarina with Play Rough, I believe, or something close to that. It, Primarina was at good health and it just got destroyed by Play Rough still. Uh, and then Glaren Slow King came in. Glaren Slow King got off one sludge wave, um, but it couldn't take a hit from Zashin and it got taken down. So um, that that last little stretch was really the decider because like I said, up to that point, yeah. it was pretty hard to, to, even at 2v1, it was still hard to see like, who's gonna win this match, uh, which I love. This this was, sorry sorry to you, to the Atlanta Bravery from last season, uh, but this was a final. This this is a match <laughs> worthy of a final. Um, this was amazing, so back and forth, but uh, I gotta I gotta get your opinion on that. What's uh, What do you think? Should he have baby doll eyes again, or do you think it was a, a smart play to try to go for the burn? Yeah, it, it was funny uh, watching on Gwenaku's side, on the Dragonite side, when that happened. He was just so flabbergasted and confused. He was like, why is this out spe <laughs> speeding me? <laughs> and he looked it up mid battle to s and then he's like, oh, baby dolls is priority. So um, I like that initial move to get rid of that intrepid sword. I don't know, I'm kind of with Derek. I think I would have gone with the skull and we saw it um, against the Galarian Slow King. Uh, that crunch basically took it down to like, the borderline of red and yellow it wasn't like barely yellow or anything so i don't know if another baby doll's eyes would have allowed galarian slow king to take another hit so i would say try to get some damage off try to get the burn because i think if he got the burn we we're talking about derek being the champion of, of the yeah. ebl season two so i kind of like his thought process on going for the skull a couple a little bit of damage not a lot but a little bit of damage as well as potential for burn because i think even if he did another baby doll eyes I think I think Guanaco still pulls this out. I, I think Galarian Slow King, I think that crunch still does over half damage on that Galarian Slow King. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh but but at, in a time like that, mid battle, I probably would have gone with the scald. Okay. I mean that's fair. I think if I remember correctly, Galarian Slow King had a round to uh, to ten HP and I believe one crunch got it to about eighty. Um so yeah. maybe it would have been very close yeah you're, I, you're, I, really, you're really playing the numbers right there yes. and, and that's a lot of math so it's like yeah. it's like do you take that risk or do you maybe try to get that burn you, you know that that that's the beauty of of the ebl and, and and competitive pokemon it's like sometimes you gotta do math quickly and i'm not that great at math so <laughs> uh <laughs> that that but honestly i i personally think he really could have gone wrong either way um 
the guaranteed attack drop or the burn attack drop either way I, I don't really see like a bad decision because like you said if he gets the burn he's the champion if he yeah. drops the baby doll eyes that's a risk as well it's a risk either way because right. it, it, it's a risk either way so i really don't think he could have played that differently uh maybe the baby doll eyes makes a big difference i don't know i've heard derek say that it would have made a difference i don't know we just don't know the calculations and all that stuff um but with that being said, Miami walked away with the 6-5 win in one of, I mean, if not the best matches in the EBL period that we've seen. I mean, oh, this yeah. was fantastic. It was such a back and forth match. Again, very worthy of a final. Uh, what a, like, just what a fantastic way to end out the season. We've seen, I mean, that's crazy to say with this season because we've seen amazing battle after amazing battle. Just every week had something crazy going on um, and it was topped off in probably the best way possible. Uh, I just kind of wish someone would have stalled because that would have been the best way to end the season. But <laughs> but uh, it was it was fantastic in Miami. Starting a little bit of a dynasty here. They got two straight wins, uh, two straight championship wins. Charizard, despite not making an appearance in this match, is your playoff MVP. Uh, it racked up seven kills in the two matches it was in, and it did not die once. Uh, it was a fantastic Pokemon for, for Ganako. I will still say Rillaboom was his best one, but Charizard definitely stepped up towards the end, much like Weavile from last season. Um, but what an ending. Uh, I do want to mention... Miami does have the longest win streak in the EBL. I kind of did some number crunching and stuff. I believe I'm, I think I'm right on this. Uh, Miami has the longest win streak in the EBL across two seasons. So they won two straight matches uh, to cap off last season and then won their first three this season. So that, that's a total of five right there, five straight wins. Um, however, in a single season, uh, Atlanta, I believe, did it twice, uh, a four win streak. Uh, LA did it once this season. Uh, and Miami also did it once this season. So within a season, Atlanta, Miami, and LA are the only teams to have a four win streak. However, Miami's currently sitting on a four win streak. So I'm very curious for them to go into next season and see if they can expand that. And who knows, maybe push it to like six, seven, eight wins straight. That would be a, an insane thing to watch. Um, so that's definitely a storyline heading into next season because like I said, they're currently on a four game winning streak. So it'll be interesting to see that carried into next season. Uh, I do also want to mention, I love Derek's Dragon Ball nicknames. Love it. Uh, that was that was one thing I actually forgot to say right at the beginning. Um, but I don't think either guy really played bad in this match. I think it was very well fought, very well thought out from both sides. Again, maybe Derek brings Mimikyu instead of uh, Togekiss. Maybe he brings Mimikyu instead of uh, someone. I'm not sure. It's, it's hard. It's really hard to judge. Um, I would love to see a rematch with different uh, choices from Derek. Um, just like a what if, you know, kind of scenario. But uh, again, this is just a fantastic match. I really don't think either guy like misplayed mm -hmm. too hard. Uh, maybe some miscues, maybe some little things, but nothing major. It was just a back and forth match. And it was just a well fought final. I mean, that's really all we can say is this is just a well fought final. Fantastic. Congratulations to Miami. Uh, ridiculous. I mean, just a ridiculous match. Uh, and GG's to both of you guys. Uh, any last words about this match? Yeah, you, you said it right there. There weren't a lot of miscues. And, and another cool thing that I enjoyed where there wasn't a lot of RNG type stuff. There wasn't a lot of that that burn from the Scald or this added effect or this boost or, or, or not boost. So it was mm -hmm. nice to see that this actually came down to uh, the uh, Derek and Guanaco's uh, just battle styles, battle experience, their strategy and everything. And it wasn't like, you know, we got four skull, four burns from a scald, and and you know Miami Dragon is just like, well, I got burned every single time. Like I don't know what yeah. you want me to do. So I was glad that it didn't come down to a lot of RNG stuff, which was really really nice. And you mentioned a rematch, and this is a little sneak peek for season three, week four of the regular season. These two uh, play again, so we won't have to wait until the uh, the next championship or the next playoffs for them to match up. So we will get that in the season three regular season. A little spoiler for you guys uh, with the schedule. So definitely excited. Obviously will be a little bit of different teams but hey these are two great battlers and we're excited to, to see them play but congratulations to the miami dragon Knights, season two champs and you know dynasty and all that stuff dynasty i mean yeah they're they're gonna be uh, they're gonna become the patriots aren't they oh uh, god uh, <laughs> um one more thing i do want to mention uh, he he Timmy kind of clicked this in my head. That was something I really liked about my match with uh, Landon or Inferno Men. 
um, was that in that match, there wasn't a whole lot of luck going on either. Yeah. There also wasn't a, a, any misplays, in my opinion. Not too many misplays, just simple little things that were miscued. Uh, and that's what I really loved about that match. And that's what I really loved about this match. Timmy actually brought up a very good point there. Um, that it, there really weren't. There, I mean, I don't even know if any Pokemon even critted in this match. I, I I could be wrong because, again, my memory of this match is a little a little hazy. Um, but I I don't think any Pokemon even critted, at least not often. And yeah, it was just it just really came down to skill and experience. And even then, it was still came down to a little a little bit of luck towards the end, you know, taking hits and, and all that stuff. But uh, an incredible match nonetheless. And what a way to cap off the season man. that was incredible <laughs> um so with that being said next season uh we do have 12 coaches again uh, again a few coaches are dropping out due to some time constraints life stuff you know all that um so some coaches are not going to be returning my i am one of them um other coaches will be taking over i don't know if if those coaches have announced i don't know who's announced what i know like uh, I, I don't even want to I don't even want to speculate, but there are some coaches that have uh, announced they're leaving I don't know if there's some coaches that have announced they're being in the EBL or have said anything um, So I'm not gonna speak for them, but uh, you should definitely get excited We got some new competitors some fresh meat for <laughs> for season uh, three uh, And I'm super pumped for that to go down uh, as for the weekly roundups I am handing the torch over to Timmy over there. He is taking over as the main host of the uh weekly roundups and he's going to be joined by inferno man he is also making a return for the weekly roundups uh, i can't say whether i'm going to be returning or not we'll see um i don't want to take a spot from either of these gentlemen um so if you know they're comfortable with what they're doing i'm not going to take anything away from them it, just because i might want to come back nah, i ain't doing that um but i'm not returning for season three for that in content either i will be doing the mvp cards um and the EBL season three logo, which I actually need to really start getting to work on. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to be still doing that stuff uh, on the side because it's it's not as much time. I just have, you know, a lot of stuff going on right now. So I need all the time I can get. Um, so Timmy is, I mean, you guys have seen it this season. He's been a fantastic host when he's been there. I'm watching you. Uh, <laughs> um, but he's going to be joined you guys saw landon last season as well you guys know how they operate they're both fantastic people fantastic hosts um so best of luck to you timmy next season how are how you feeling about about taking over the the weekly run-ups here you know it, it's big shoes to fill i mean you do such a great job and, and being along your side this whole season it it, it was a lot of fun uh, i definitely have learned a lot on how to run these roundups and hopefully i can do half as good a job as you buddy but either way we're going to be having a lot of fun doing the roundups in uh, see, I was about to say week three. Well, we will be doing a week three <laughs> roundup, but specifically in the rest of season three. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to take over and uh, hopefully I can do as good of a job as you. Well, thank you for the kind words, man. And I, I know you will. I know you will. I know you will. Uh, you and Landon are going to do fantastic. I know it. Um, so, yeah, that that's that's that. That's going to be it for our season two weekly roundups uh, uh we will be getting on some postseason interviews with coaches um so those will be coming soon ish i can't say exactly when but those will be coming soon um so yeah look forward to that and then january is when season three will be kicking off i cannot remember the exact date for my life but uh <laughs> but january is when the season three is kicking off uh and yeah so look forward to that uh we appreciate you guys we love you guys again go check out all the links down below my links timmy's links all the coaches they're all down below go subscribe go like go do all that good stuff go check out all their videos and all their content uh they're all fantastic people and fantastic content creators go check them out go subscribe again go do all that good stuff uh and yeah i think that's everything so do you have any final words for the people uh, you know what? Uh, since this is trending, I just want to give everybody a reminder that uh, when it comes to math, and I said I wasn't good at math either, but I do remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, so uh, make sure that whenever oh, no. it happens to you in your life, make sure it's parentheses, and I don't know what the E is, but just remember PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Oh, no, e e exponents. That's the E. So parentheses, exponents. exponents Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So those are my final words for season two. 
it's trending again really <laughs> i feel like it's a weekly thing at this point <laughs> uh so yeah hope you all have a fantastic day and you'll be seeing timmy in season three see you guys bye